Have you read the news about Google releasing a Chrome OS version for pretty much every computer? Well, I have, and I feel like we should check it out. In this video, we are going to download the first public iteration of Chrome OS Flex, and we are going to install it on an old machine. Let's get started. Okay, first thing to do is to head over to the Chrome Web Store using your Chrome browser, your Brave browser, or your Microsoft Edge browser. Here, you search for Chromebook, recovery utility, select the entry, and then hit the Add button. Confirm that you want to have that extension being set up for you and then you can simply start it. When the extension is running, you first of all press Get Started. Then you select a model from the list. We go for Google Chrome OS Flex as manufacturer and the product is Chrome OS Flex Developer Unstable. Hit continue. Then, if not already done, insert your USB stick and select it from the drop-down list. Hit continue and hit create now. Please be sure that you actually want to delete everything on that USB device because that process is not reversible. Then it is time to grab some coffee. Now the download process starts, which typically lasts a few minutes, and then the recovery image is extracted, checked, and written onto your USB stick. The overall process could easily take 20 minutes, probably even up to an hour, depending on your internet connectivity and the speed of your USB stick. So be patient and relax. I'll be back once the process has finished. Okay, the installation of the Chrome OS recovery image on the USB stick has successfully been completed and now we can take that stick and head over to our computer. Let's do that. The machine I have here is a ThinkPad T440p, which is a bit overkill since it rocks 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. But, you know, better too many things to carry around than not being able to run it properly. What we need to do now is we need to start the machine and switch into the boot manager. That process is different with every single manufacturer. With Lenovo, I have to press the F12 key. So I do that now and then we execute the installation process. Here within the boot manager, I select my USB stick and hit enter. Okay, here we are in the start screen. The device still reads cloud ready, although the new official name is Chrome OS Flex. It has to do with the history of this specific version of Chrome OS. The maker of Cloud Ready was acquired by Google end of 2020 and now they are working under the Google umbrella. Keep in mind, this is a preview version, so it will not be polished around each and every edge. We hit get started and we want to install Cloud Ready 2.0. So we now hit install CloudReady 2.0 and yes, we agree 
to Cloud Ready being able and being allowed to erase the whole hard drive. So last point in time where we could back out, but we won't do it. The actual installation process takes a few minutes, can last up to 20 minutes. In my experience, it is more like five to 10 minutes, depending on your devices and your USB sticks speed. Good time to have a tea. Okay, the installation has already completed. So I remove the USB stick and now I can just hit shut down and the computer will then shut down. Okay, my device was a bit hesitant to shut down. So I ultimately pressed the power on off key for a long time. Now it is shut down and now we can restart it. This time I won't press any key to enter the boot manager since I just want to boot into Chrome OS. I already see a splash screen and now I can set up my account. So I hit get started. I connect to my Wi-Fi and once I have a working Wi-Fi connection, I should read through the terms of service, which I obviously do, hit accept, and then I can decide whether to set up the device for myself or for a child. You know, I'm a big child, but nonetheless, I set it up for myself, so I continue with that. I hit next. And now I need to log into my Google account or I could create a new one from the screen as well. After having entered my password, I then again hit next. And now I can set up syncing. I leave everything on default, hit accept and continue. I personally don't want to send too many information towards Google. I mean. I mean, they pretty much know all the things about me, but nonetheless. So I uncheck the hardware collection checkbox and hit accept and continue. Now I can set up Google Assistant. So I agree to Google Assistant being able to work on this machine. And I agree to access Google Assistant with the magic word. Since I already set up Google Assistant and voice match earlier on, I'm not forced to do the repetition of the magic word. So I'm already done. And that means I just hit get started. And now have a working Chrome OS device. Okay, first thing to do here is to change the keyboard layout that is necessary since I have a German keyboard. If you have an English keyboard, you don't need to do that, obviously. So I enter the settings and search for keyboard. And then I switch to change input settings and add an input method. And here I search for German. and hit add. And now I can remove the English keyboard setting here as well. Perfect. I can then leave everything else on defaults here. So I'm fine. Good. Once we are in the settings app, let's look a bit around. Network is quite obvious. We can configure our network settings here. Bluetooth, again, quite obvious we can do our Bluetooth settings here. Connected devices is interesting. If you have an Android device, you can then connect it directly to this Chrome OS device. In accounts, you can see the information about your currently 
setup account. Device allows you to configure mouse, a touchpad, and so on and so forth. Keyboard, which we just have seen. If you have multiple displays, you can change the settings here as well. So I can, for example, increase the display size to be native, which means in my case, it is full HD. Nonetheless, could be that it is a bit hard to read. So I probably want to go down to a smaller setting here. So you can change that accordingly within personalization. You can then change your login image and you can change the wallpaper. You have a multitude of wallpapers available here. So if you are like me and love cities, you can go into the cityscape section and search for a nice one. I loved this one with the rainy street already on Android. So I go with that one. And as you have seen, it's already set. And then close the wallpaper up. In search and assistant, you can enable or disable Google Assistant then again. And within search, you can even define an alternate search engine. Currently, you have the choice between Google, Bing, and Yahoo. So I leave it with Google because from a search engine's perspective, it is the best of those three. Security and privacy allows you to obviously set security and privacy settings and within the apps section, you can then change the apps information. So what I like to have is a 24 hour clock, which is the default for Germany. My time zone looks like being perfectly set already. And then you can just scroll through things here as well. If you are one of those guys that actually want to have Linux on a Chromebook, you can do that. Within the developer section, you can turn on Linux development environment. So if you do that, you then can go and first of all, create a user and then use that development environment to, for example, install OBS Studio say Firefox browser, those things that are not native to Chrome OS. And one of the most beloved features of Chromebooks is the power wash feature. And uh, that power wash feature basically completely resets the device and you then can start all over. Keep in mind that it will delete local files, but if you look at the taskbar, you actually see there is some Google apps pre-installed, such as Chrome browser, such as Gmail, such as your calendar. And you also have a files app. And that files app allows you to directly interact with your Google Drive as well. So you won't probably be likely to lose too many things here. To install additional apps on this specific build on Chrome OS, you can either turn on Linux mode or you open the Chrome Web Store. So you just enter Web Store into the search and there you can then search for apps and install them. You can then search for Chrome extensions and install them. But please keep in mind, this edition of Chrome OS is pre-release software. So things like a Play Store, which would allow you to run Android apps natively, are not part of that release so far. But nonetheless, if you can live with the more traditional way of interacting with your Chrome OS device without Android apps, this one should give you a great start. So to me, 
I can imagine using that or at least recommending that to people who actually don't want to bother about settings, don't want to get bothered with installation, just want to have a computer that runs. The nice thing with Chrome OS Flex is that it even runs with old Chromebooks which are end of life cycle. So you can breathe fresh air into those old devices. So would I recommend Chrome OS Flex to everyone? From a technical perspective, yes. Um, Chrome OS is awesome. Chrome OS is an amazing operating system. It's simple to use. It's completely web oriented. So it's perfect if you want to just use it on your couch, in your living room, um, and to just you know surf around and stay connected. That's perfect. It's very easy to install. The power wash feature is one of the most underrated features I've ever seen since it basically allows you to completely reset your Chrome OS to factory state. So that is awesome as well. I would not recommend it for those who care about privacy since Chrome OS is Google um, and that means Google sees everything. It is currently not that expandable since it has no support for Android apps at the moment. But for an old computer, which you just want to use to do light work with, which you just want to use for surfing the web, checking your emails, working with your Google apps or probably your Microsoft Office apps, you can even do things like Teams calls from within Google Chrome using the Teams web app. So even that would be fine. It could be a good choice. Um, and in the end, it's rock solid. It is secure. And, you know, it runs on machines that would probably not even be able to properly run a modern day Linux. So. It is a great operating system if you are not concerned about privacy and if you can live with being tied to web apps at the moment. And since it is early release, well, let me put it that way, I'm not too sure about the update situation going forward. But then again, it's a Chrome OS device. You anyhow store everything in the cloud. So just download a new version, enter the USB stick, run the installation, and off you go. So what do you make out of that? Is Chrome OS Flex the solution for your old laptop? I personally think it could be, but what is your opinion? Let me know in the comments below. And while you are there, don't forget to like, to subscribe, and to hit notification bell since it helps. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And don't forget, let's make the world a better place. See you later. Take care. Bye.